This pill causes dementia. Across five countries in recent studies, it was shown on average to increase your risk by 35%. This was looked at in the United States, in the UK, Denmark, Germany, and Korea. As a matter of fact, in Korea, they found even short-term use increased your risk of dementia. What pill am I talking about? PPIs. These are proton pump inhibitors that you would be prescribed if you have acid reflux and or hiatal hernia. They're, they're one of the most worldwide commonly prescribed medications. So if, if you're not taking it, you likely know somebody who, who is taking one. And these studies were, um, were cohort studies, so looking at group of users and observational studies, and granted a randomized control trial is the most accurate type of study. None of those are available to us, but across five countries, there were very robust studies done. And I wanna, I, I gave you the average of 35% across the five, but I wanna give you some specifics. So in Denmark, it was a 42% increased use. In the United Kingdom, uh, they found a 22% risk of all cause dementia. And then when they broke it down, 21% increased use, uh, sorry, risk in Alzheimer's and a 43% increased risk of vascular dementia. So this is where you're not getting enough blood flow to your brain and then your brain is suffering and uh, dementia-like symptoms result. In Korea, it was a 36% increased risk. And as I mentioned, even in short-term users, they found this. And I have heard this from patients. I've heard this from, from you who watch this channel. Um, I've spoken about this before, but I didn't have all the research to hand and people were asking for that. So, so here it is. Um, so as I said, even short-term users can feel this at times. And then in Germany, it was a 44% increased risk. So, so pretty robust. Oh, the US study was 33%. And they the specifics of that was in uh, adults 45 and older after about four years of use. So that's, that's the overall. Now, granted, these were not randomized control trials, but what is it that we do know about PPIs? Because we have uh, absolute confirmation of what I'm about to talk to you about that PPIs do, which can lead to symptoms of poor memory and cognitive decline. So what PPIs do, because they decrease the acid in your stomach, they decrease your ability to absorb certain nutrients, vitamin B12, um, the mineral magnesium, also your ability to absorb protein, and they're known to offset your microbiome. If you're not familiar with that term, that is the 40 to 100 trillion organisms in your colon that not only give you good uh, balanced gut health, but also immune health, hormonal health. And so when when those are altered, um, there's there's it's very difficult to maintain, let's call, let's call it what it is. It's impossible to be optimally healthy if you have poor microbiome health and the PPIs are known to do that. Specifically with B12, when you have deficient B12, you will suffer cognitive impairment, memory loss, mood changes, and something called elevated homocysteine, which is checked in your blood, and that is linked to uh, Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia. Then with magnesium that's needed for uh, handling inflammation uh, and also kind of the overall health of your, your neurons, so your, your nerves are transmitting information the way they should instead of that being um, thwarted in any form. Uh, low magnesium is linked to poor memory, depression, and accelerated cognitive decline. So these are facts. These we do know about PPIs. And then with the gut microbiome disruption, uh, not only do you get the leaky gut because the microbiome is disrupted, meaning things are passing out of your gut in, from uh, like toxins, bad bacteria, etc. Those can get through um, the blood-brain barrier, and now you have inflammation of the brain. And so it is known to increase your risk of uh, Alzheimer's as well as Parkinson's disease. And then protein digestion is impaired because protein digestion starts in the stomach and it needs acid in order to occur. And so uh, these deficiencies created can impact memory and cognition. So, you know, we're repeating the same impairments, but, but that's what dementia is, you know? You don't have 
you're, you, have, you have memory loss, you can't find words. Um, it's, it's a horrible, horrible disease to suffer. And uh, by the way, it's increasing with each passing year. So it's, it's on the increase. If you're a woman like myself, it's worse for us than for men. Certainly men are not immune, uh, but we do suffer at a higher risk. And that leads me to uh, a quick adjunct regarding hormones. So if you are a woman who is uh, either perimenopausal or menopausal, and it's been uh, not more than 10 years since you started menopause, you really want to look at hormone replacement therapy because the research out about that is that you can um, you can uh, salvage <laughs> by 64% your risk of dementia by being on hormone replacement therapy. Now, if this is brand new for you, uh, I, I understand because back in 2002, 23 years ago, women were warned about dangers of hormone replacement therapy. That research has been proven to be false, and uh, I urge you to look up an FDA roundtable. I'm um, recording this right now in July of 2025, and we just there was just last week the roundtable by the FDA where they um, go into detail of how this research was misinterpreted, et cetera. Oh gosh, took 23 years. So. A lot of women have suffered from double their risk of, of heart disease and heart attack, uh, double their risk for uh, suffering fractures from osteoporosis, and an increased risk, 64% of cognitive decline because they didn't have uh, protective estrogen and progesterone is needed as well as long as you have a uterus. So I, I diverged a little bit, but as a woman, I wanted, I wanted to share that because we are talking about dementia. So what do you do about it? If you're on a PPI, uh, what needs to be done is you have to find a clinician who's, who's very savvy and comfortable with getting to the actual root cause of why you have your reflux symptoms so you don't need to be the, on the PPI anymore and you can wean off of it. I wouldn't wean off of it yourself. There's a very specific way to do it and we don't want you to get what's called a rebound reflux where you actually get more acid because of improper <clears throat> excuse me, weaning. So find a clinician who's, who's very comfortable with that. That's definitely something we do here. Um, but you know, you find your own clinician as, as you wish. Now, uh, the other thing is, of course, you have these deficiencies, potentially B12, magnesium, protein. Um, you know, yes, you can, you can augment B12, and magnesium, but if, if you don't have enough acid to absorb them, you're still not going to absorb them. So it's really critical that we, we get you off of it, plus you really have to rebalance that microbiome. And that involves some laboratory testing and, again, a clinician who's very comfortable with what your particular microbiome needs. And it's, it's not just, oh, take some probiotics. Not by any means. There's there's a there's a proper way to do that as well. We're all very unique, and and you need somebody who's who's comfortable and and excels at that. So uh, I hope this was helpful. It, it's very unfortunate. Uh, I certainly have had relatives go through dementia. It's a very very sad thing, and anything we can do to protect ourselves and and not succumb to that is so well worth the effort. And. Um, I, I hope this was helpful for you, and I hope you'll share it with somebody who maybe is taking a PPI and you know falls into this category. So there's a lot that can be done. That's the good news. And um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. I answer all my comments. I love to hear from you. Plus, it helps the algorithm, and so more people can be exposed. And also consider subscribing. I'm trying to increase my subscribers so that, again, more people can get exposed to this information. Okay, we'll talk soon.